Pizza Ranch. I really do love Pizza Ranch. Oh, sorry. Chapter 10, The Rational Consumer, and Chapter 4, The Consumer and Producer Circle. Uh, these two chapters are combined here for this unit, which leads us to uh, several learning targets. They are as follows. How consumers make choices about the purchase of goods and services. Why consumers' general goal is to maximize utility or their happiness. Why the principle of diminishing marginal utility applies to consumption of most goods and services. How to use marginal analysis to find the optimal consumption bundle. The meaning of consumer surplus and its relationship to the demand curve. The meaning of producer surplus and its relationship to supply curve. That's a lot of information. Don't worry, we'll just take it one at a time. And luckily, you can pause and rewind whenever you want. Now, I think I might go to Peach Ranch. Good luck. Utility, it's a word that economists use to describe happiness or a level of satisfaction that a consumer gets when they purchase a good. We can use it to analyze purchase decisions, analyze how people behave, for instance. The theory of consumer choice is that each of us as consumers will spend our income in a way that maximizes our total utility or our total satisfaction or happiness. And again, utility is just a simple word for the amount of satisfaction or happiness that we, we receive from a good. So how many of you have been to Pizza Ranch? Oh, just curious. Last year I got a few people to go out there for their study groups and I believe there's one in Champlain and one in Elk River. So how nice is that? Well anyway, on to today's uh, lecture here. It says total versus marginal utility. Total utility is the benefit to us from all of the units of a good purchased. So if I ate a whole pizza at Pizza Ranch, my total satisfaction is if I include all those slices of pizza in that pizza pie that I ate. Marginal utility, though, however, is the benefit of each slice of pizza that I had. So if I had one slice of pizza, how much satisfaction did that give me? Maybe it's 10 utils. Utils is another definition that economists use to describe happiness. So 10 utils of satisfaction. Then I eat another slice of pizza ranch. Well, that was pretty good. Maybe it's 9 utils of satisfaction. And the third slice and the fourth slice and well, heck, it's a buffet, so I'm just going to keep eating. When I get to the 7th or 8th slice, man, that is not tasting very good anymore. My satisfaction is down quite a bit. It might only be 2 utils of satisfaction. Or if I go for that 10th slice of pizza, I might be in the bathroom, and that might be negative satisfaction. Not a pretty sight. The law of diminishing margin utility states that the more that we consume of a good, the less satisfaction we will receive from it. Again, this is quote-unquote the law, which means that it could be broken, too. There are some instances where this might be, not be true. Usually those can uh, include um, hobbies, like stamp collections or baseball cards, where if you get your last card, it brings you a lot of satisfaction because it completes your set. It also could might be an addiction, unfortunately, that might break this law. However, most things do follow this rule. So the more of a good that consumer has, the less marginal utility an additional unit contributes to overall satisfaction. I've given you the Pizza Ranch example already, and probably too much information on the last slide about Pizza Ranch and marginal utility. However, there is a nice picture below, too, that you can read as well. On this slide, you can see Cassie's total utility and marginal utility for clams. 
the total utility is all of the clams put together. So when she has one clam, it gives her 15 utils of satisfaction. Two gives her a total of 28. Three gives her a total of 39, and so on. That is her total utility. You can see that it is upward sloping and starts to even start to decrease when she's eaten too much. Now margin utility is looking at the additional satisfaction of each added clam she eats. So that's the difference in satisfaction from going from one to two, for instance. So as she goes from one clam, that is 15 utils of, utils of satisfaction, to two clams, just 28, we subtract those numbers and we see that it is 13 utils of satisfaction. And then we go from two to three. From the second to the third clam, how much more satisfaction did I get from having that third clam? And we can see that they get 11 utils of satisfaction. So you can see our total utility and her margin utility curve here. Are the prices at Disneyland goofy? Well, a one-day ticket costs $63, two-day tickets only $85, three-day tickets $109, four-day $129, five days $139. What's going on here? Why does Disneyland charge less for the second day than the first day? Well, how many of you have been to Valley Fair? You know that when you go there, they offer you a cheaper ticket the next day for coming back the next day. Why do they do this? Well, again, it's diminishing margin utility. You get a ton of satisfaction the first day riding all the rides that you really love. But to come back the next day, well, I've already done that, so I'm not going to pay the same price. I might be able to pay, be willing to pay a little bit less and still come back, but I'm not going to pay the full price. And certainly for five days, you're going to have to give me a great deal to go to your place for five days. Uh, this is kind of just a straight definitional um, slide here. It says using marginal utility, the optimal purchase rule. You're going to buy the quantity of each good at which price and marginal utility are equal that will give you the greatest satisfaction. So P equals MU, price equals marginal utility. Well, let's look at pizza again. You have total utility and you have marginal utility for each pizza that you buy. The first pizza you buy gives you $15 of total utility. The second, a total of $28 of total utility. A third one, $40 of total utility. What we want to find, though, is the marginal utility. Remember, this is the added satisfaction of each pizza that you eat or that you invite over for friends to eat. So when you go from 0 to 1 pizzas, that's $15 of marginal utility. From 1 to 2 is 28 minus 15, so you have $13 of marginal utility, and so on. Until you get to your fourth pizza, and that gives you a marginal utility of $11.50. If the prices are $11 per pizza, then that's how many pizzas you would want to buy, would be four pizzas, because your marginal utility equals $11.50, and the price of pizza is about $11, and so that's where they're closest, and that would where you would maximize your satisfaction. Here's just a simple graph of plotting the points for margin utility. Uh, the purpose of this graph is again just to show you that the margin utility curve is the reason behind the demand curve. That is why it is downward sloping. You can also see at the point of $11 where our satisfaction level would be and we wouldn't want to go below that as our margin utility is drastically decreasing. So again, four pizzas is about where you'd want to be at. We're at eleven dollars equals about eleven fifty. That's where you would maximize your satisfaction. More importantly though, again, this shows us the reason why the demand curve is downward sloping.